Hello, and welcome to Icon Underground Radio for the week of uh, early September. September, yes. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Trickster. And I'm David, a.k.a. Strange Four. Yeah, we, our schedule has been a mess because of COVID and special needs kittens rescue and kittens and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but we are trying to get a little bit back on schedule, uh, especially mm. with new movie coming out. Uh, so we, we are going to try to burn through the highlights of the news for the last few weeks. There wasn't really any, like, earth shattering like single news items no, really no i don't think there's anything really big unless i've completely forgotten anything it was just a bunch of it's mostly just been movie lead up stuff yeah and a bunch of little things uh yeah. the hall of fame vote is now live uh it is a google docs link this time which is different but okay so if you go and it's mostly just voting for toys that have come out in the past year well there are actually some people have been pointing out i haven't had a chance to look over it properly yet but apparently some of the toys are toys that aren't even out yet so yeah quite a few <laughs> or at least ones that i have not seen around here they may all be out and i just haven't seen them but yeah and like who is your who who is your favorite of the 13 just like, yeah that's kind of an interesting question i mean i assume that leads into the next series being reportedly the 13 themed which yeah well i've heard that before <laughs> <laughs> victory with Remember the wind? yeah but that that kind of it kind of was i've been reading those novels lately um because oh, yeah. i got a hold of some uh available ebook copies of them uh and i've been reading through those and i mean yeah they're those novels are about the 13, but yeah, aligned kind of the 13 well, were aren't like they also noise. about like uh, random Transformers thinking about Shockwave's surprised face? <laughs> For the most part, it's actually, they're actually pretty decent. Uh, there is a point where it's, there's something that refers to Shockwave's expression and i'm like yes noted face haver shockwave yeah the expression on his uh, face yeah it, it feels like or at least from that that bit you posted it, it feels like it needed an editing pass yeah or three which you know is always something that hurts me a great deal as an unemployed editor uh mm. also uh just characters being only physically described in the absolute vaguest term vaguest terms until uh thundertron shows up like a game of thrones dinner and it's all like just <laughs> elaborate he's a smorgasbord he's mentions his peg leg and does it mention the parrot no i don't think he has a parrot in here i he does have a giant bird one of the pirates is a giant bird oh i'm like close to the end of the second novel uh, so those are relevant to the Star Seekers, which uh, I believe are not going to come up in our shipping report because they are only people are receiving them through uh, online orders. Like I yes. got Filch from Pulse because I she was a, a have to have. Uh, some other people are getting them. Some people are actually getting them from the Walmart website, which is always oh, roulette. Yeah. Uh, speaking of. My Thundertron with, uh, what is, uh, Night Strike, the little white bat, who's named after the one from Robots in Disguise, and Calcitron showed up from Walmart. Yes. So. I just haven't opened it But yet. yes, I guess we will, we will get to there. We are not quite there yet, but on the subject oh, okay. of the 13, the 13 are part of the Hall of Fame vote, which does play into the, uh, rumors that they're going to be a big part of the next series. Uh, so, yeah, if you go to, I assume their own social media probably has links to it. I know tfu.info's mm. social media has links to it. Uh, so find those on whatever social platform you are currently most comfortable with, and you can go and do some voting. Uh, there was uh, the Tokyo Toy Show happened 
while we were taking a break. Yeah. Uh, there is a teaser for some kind of studio trigger thing, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, which, it, it's exciting, but also hesitant and I'll pro- will probably be very disappointed since I'm guessing it's probably just going to be a short because of the 40th anniversary mm-hmm. animated by some people from Trigger, which most likely means the director of uh, SSS S Gridman who's a master Transformers fan. Mm-hmm. Well, a, a handful of the staff of Trigger are big Transformers fans, but he is gigantic. Uh, oh, what was his name? Kira. Dang it. I have to look it up. So we, we will see where that leads to. I mean, even just a little thing. I, I like to say that when I approach new Transformers media, I keep my hopes high and my expectations low. So... <laughs> Akira Amemiya. So hopefully this will be a lot of fun, even if it's just a very short thing. Uh, yeah, well, okay, here's the thing. Going back to Gridman, there was for was it Ultraman Anniversary, maybe it was for the Gridman Anniversary, there, there was there was a series of like animated shorts by various animators and things for a while. I forget what it was even called. But one of the ones was a tribute to the old Gridman show. Mm-hmm. And animated by the guy who ended up directing the Gridman show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean it's So it was like that was like a five minute short that did lead to something. It, it is possible. So in theory I mean it's not like Like in another five years we might get SS SS Transformers <laughs> for the equivalent. I mean it's not like uh Takara is really doing much in the way of Transformers media these days, so No. It would be nice to like have an anime animated Transformers again. Yeah, I mean, not that short CG thing to sell toys to King of the Magazine, but like, yeah, not go. I mean, I always no. care more about the writing above everything else. So if it's well written, well, yes, well, which is what you know, the Unicron trilogy stuff did not do as well at. Yeah, it was not no like like yeah, Gridman. Gridman, at least the first season, was well written. You can have good stuff, or like have it yeah. co-written with some Americans I mean, or something, or just Dino Xenon. Get James Roberts to pen a vague <laughs> they script. They do like him over there. I'd go with that. But I mean, Dino Xenon was good. It just kind of felt like they used up all their biggest ideas and didn't know what to do with the second season. But it's shockingly weird because I didn't find out until recent, or maybe I did when we were doing the podcast about it. We just go back in our archives. We did podcast about SS SS Gridman and Dino Xenon. Yes. It was the head writer was the same. It I could have sworn like it feels so much like it was handed off to a completely different writer. But it's like oh. no, same guy, same director. It's just it's a, it's a from an S tier anime to a B tier. It's sequel. a thing with writing in general where sometimes you have all these ideas that you've been saving up for a decade. Yeah, that you pour into and, something, and then the sequel is like you got to do it quick in and a then year. Yeah. And it's like the B stuff. They're like, like, hey. Here's what I didn't use, and I have to string a story yeah, together. Yeah, and you don't have that decade to let it stew. So, it, yeah. yeah, that's that's just, that's fine. That's understandable. Uh, there's also a Bump of Chicken Optimus Prime uh, to go with the Bump, yes, of, bump chicken of Chicken Bumblebee again. that some people were able to obtain. Oh, yeah, that was like Powder Blue or something? Yes, that was neat. it was... The Optimus Prime is children's coloring book <laughs> he does look fun he looks fun <laughs> yeah uh, there i'm kind of a- surprised like the color breakdowns of the mold works that way unless there's a lot of paint I mean, it, that actually that would be curious to know about just for because it's like left arm and right arm are different colors the technical it, right, like, whatever, maybe they they have it so those can be gated off for some reason which is interesting maybe. i don't even know why you would set it up that way but I, I don't know. I get, Maybe if there something's is paint. big enough, it might make sense, but it's still weird. Yeah. Uh, there is also uh, they showed off the masterpiece God Bomber. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's God Bomber. Sure, that's they made a God Bomber again. Okay, is this is this like the third God Bomber? Counting the original. I mean, I think. Were, I don't know. I can't. I can't keep up with the the stuff. I think there was one. 
that was part of some thing. This is great. I'm I'm so useful and knowledgeable on this. I know subject. it's just it's just a thing. It's, it's, I'm gonna it's have God to go bomber. to the TF. It's, it's needy exists. Don't care. Mostly, yeah. I'm just familiar with the uh, the re-releases they did and the burning one and. And uh, now, I, now I gotta look it up. Now I gotta look it up. Uh, yes, there was a Legends one. So there I, was the original. Okay, so this is basically probably just a redeco or a remold of the Legends one, maybe? No, I'm pretty sure this is just a Masterpiece one. Oh, oh, it's for the Masterpiece. See, I, I didn't even pay enough attention because I don't care about yes. that God bomber. Uh, but yes, in 2017, okay. there was a new mold that was God Bomber. Uh, that and was now it's a masterpiece. Yay! In Legends, and yes, now there's Masterpiece MPG 14. Uh, he also comes with little tiny uh, Headmaster kiddos. Oh, so he's got like a little tiny. They're painted though, which is nice. They're not oh, just like uh, single color slugs. Uh, but there's little Shuta and Cab and Minerva. So so those are cute. Uh, I, I'm still very fond of the, the clip from the Master Force dub uh, where Jinrai points out that his name is Optimus Prime because he's Japanese. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that is one of those things that is, I'm sure, very exciting for people who are big on... Uh, all the Japanese exclusive stuff and the Japanese exclusive characters. Master Force was a pretty good series. Hmm. God Bomber wasn't really a character, but you know, you have to, ha it's like Victory oh. Leo. You have to have it so you can form the super robot. <laughs> yes. Now I'm referring to Victory Leo's it, which seems unreasonably cruel to <laughs> Victory Leo. <laughs> He becomes Boots. Yeah, but he's a guy. He's an angry guy. He's an angry cat I guy. I guess he's more important than God Bomb. He is a character. I'm not... Now, Master Force, I've been going through and, and watching, like, properly sitting down and watching Headmasters, uh, now that I have that DVD set with the dub. Uh, hmm. Master Force will be up next. Uh, I'm not clear at this point on whether God Bomber is actually a sentient being. So that is something I will be interested in, in having cleared up. Whereas I know that Victory Leo is a sentient being. <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't have a, like a power master or anything to connect to him. So presumably he's just there. It's just, just armor. It's not a person. He's not people. Uh, but anyway, that's the sort of thing that is going to be very exciting for a very specific segment of the fandom. Uh, also exciting to someone, uh, is the Takara Tomy Synergex or Sen wow. Synergenex. Uh, there, there are various crossovers. Uh, there is the Godzilla X Transformers one. Yeah, like... <clears throat> I almost thought that was a joke when I first saw it, because it's so basic it, looking. It's kind of low it's effort. It's disappointing? It's a little disappointingly low effort. Apparently the laser optimus is Kiryu? Yeah, that's the like 2010s Mechagodzilla. The more recent Mechagodzilla. And yeah. then I, I just think that they Megatron Godzilla at least needs some blue spines. Yeah, well, I realize the, the transformation hinge is right there in the way, but I don't know. Yeah, in the back, you could put on the legs or some, some attachment out. you could take off or something. The head is neat, although it kind of looks more like Sludge than Megatron, oh. but like there's like based, no remolding other than the head. Your toy engineers figure some stuff out. Yeah, it, it's part of the problem is like Kiryu, he's a silver Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla. He's a solid color, charcoal, black, gray thing. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of highlights you could have on the toy, really. They're mainly one color. There is also the... But uh, somehow they're even more disappointing. I mean, like, although they tried to throw colors on the Optimus, mm -hmm. like, there's green on the trailer. Why? I don't know. It, it's just... 
There's very weird. There's also the uh, Zoids crossover one, uh, which turns into like one of the Liger kind of Zoid things, and it comes with a Diaclone yes, driver. That's an entirely new mold. That is for Zoids. That's where that's... all their effort went, I think. Yeah, apparently. That is where all their effort went, which fair. They care about Zoids. My millennial coworker I mean, look, cares about Zoids, so maybe that is it. Just like, like the idea of a Transformers and a Godzilla crossover has been in a, like back of my mind for decades, and this is what we finally get. It's just so disappointing. Mm-hmm. As, as a to the point that like they shouldn't have bothered. As a brief aside about my millennial coworker, uh, I was talking i was explaining the the packaging for the death's head marvel legends toy uh and i had to explain to him that there was a time when we had trading cards that did not have a game attached to them (laughs) yeah (laughs) the card was just a a little piece of art it wasn't like part of a game (laughs) because all he understands is trading cards that are that are a game. Uh, yeah. So, also, there are well, those... you'd have to explain baseball cards to him first to make him understand, I would Yeah, think. I suppose that's the precursor. Uh, also, yes. there are uh, there the Spider-Man Zoids, which we brought up before, I think. Yeah, which is... Briefly, briefly as a which, rumor. Which, it was announced before. It, it, it's a Spider-Zoid with a Spider-Man riding on top of it, and it looks... Way cooler than the Godzilla Transformers. Importantly, for Transformers fandom, there is a black costume version. Yes. So <laughs> so you can have Spider-Man in black costume riding a black spider zoid attacking Godzilla Grimlock, or Godzilla Grimlock Megatron. So, Ugh. also, before we leave Japan, uh, they mm. announced that uh, Optimus Prime Netsuke... Uh, if you are incredibly loaded, and everyone who saw these was like, "That's ridiculously expensive," but it it is it's, like it's, it's way a- too expensive, but it's really neat. Like like Netsuke are like th- these little miniature sculptures that you would wear in a kimono. Yeah, I mean they're to, basically they're like, attach a thing on status jewelry. They are a yeah. status piece. So yes, it's extremely expensive. Uh, it it's really cool. Is it's, it's way too expensive. Six hundred and sixty thousand yen, which which I think is I was gonna say is that like five thousand dollars or something, something in that ballpark. Under five thousand, yeah. With the conversion rate being currently yeah. what it is, it's way too much. I mean, if it was five hundred, I could kind of perfectly understand. 5,000? Is it made of gold? I'm, well, I think it's made of silver. Uh, and it is, okay. like, individually handmade. Oh, that... What? Huh. Like, they're art pieces. Okay. So, it is really just very interesting that they decided to do an Optimus Prime one. It is really pretty. I just... It's a bit... It's a lot... So, leaving, moving on from Japan now, uh, they, someone found that the, there's a trademark for Transformer Cyber World. Uh, yeah. There is no information available yet, except that there is animation and toy line planned for Q3 2025. Uh, so, this is probably whatever is going to replace or follow up on Earthspark, uh, but again, no further information. Hmm. Uh, I have a little tortoise shell who has suddenly decided that my laptop needs to be her place oh. now. <laughs> Hi, Maddie. Uh, I'm I'm looking at our notes. I'm trying to put things into some kind of like logical progression. So I will go ahead and say we don't normally do a lot of third party news, uh, but. Iron Factory, Death Cobra, no, their not, pictures. We, we didn't use to do great. any, and then we went to a convention and yeah. bought some third party, including the. I had some yes, third Death party Cobra stuff will be part of the Leo Kaiser prior combiner. to that. Yeah, it but came he, up every once in a while. He but. comes with small snake. Yes, he comes with little snake buddy. He looks great. Yeah, um, continuing to pick those up even as it you know seems possible that we might get official American 
I'm calling them breast force. I don't care. I mean, probably the at more, some point again. The more they try more, to call but... them other things, the worse I'm going to get. If they keep it up, if they keep up with this chest force nonsense, I'm calling it titty force next time. <laughs> oh. Bazonga force. Yeah, we might eventually get breast force from Hasbro, but yes, but still, the Iron Factory. We, we was... did once, kind I, of. I but... like Iron Factory. Well, Iron Factory guys, they're they're small. They're fun. Iron Factory and Mastermind Creations always do reliably pretty solid stuff. Yeah. Uh, Although, so their drill horn, like the, the head transformation, is a little weird. It keeps popping off anytime I try to do it, but works. Also. Speaking of fan creations, Simon Furman and Andrew Wildman have a podcast now. Yes, we have competition from Simon Furman. <laughs> have you listened to it? Well, I did not. Not yet. Oh. I have been catching up on everything, uh, but I do plan to because I need more. You know, between Triple Takeover and uh, Repugnus's thing, and I don't get enough. British people talking about Transformers I, in my daily commute. I don't get. No, I have mean, a lot of British people. There's there's lots of British fans doing podcasts. I mean, I am I am so. amused by British voices. I just don't listen to it. When do I listen? I think there's only well, one currently. So that is a thing. It is specifically about the history of them working on Transformers comics. Yay! Is it anywhere other than iTunes? Probably. <laughs> Hopefully, so I can listen to it. <laughs> You'll have to check on that, because... What is it actually called? It is... Man, it is 1am, and I am I am blanking out, and I have a little torty aggressively rubbing up against my arm. And I should know, because it's something that's, like, very... Them... The rest is giant robots, is what it's called. Ah. You looking that up? I'm trying to look right now. Well, first I was looking up the name of the podcast. Let me see if it's anywhere else. Uh, this is a very sweet Apple Torty and someone needs to adopt her. I Heart UK Radio? Oh, they have a oh. Patreon. There we go. Oh, if God, smart, I just want to give there. all my money to people's Patreons. I threw a bunch of money into coffee or Ko-Fi or however it's pronounced for uh, British Transformers fanzines recently. Hmm. So it's, that's cool. I don't need food. I'll just eat ramen. Go back to eating the cheap ramen so I can just get British <laughs> Transformers fanzines. Hmm. Uh, so yes, that is a thing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I can download it off their Patreon. Yay! I need to follow. <laughs> our last couple things to talk about are video game related. Uh, there has constantly been murmuring, and in fact, there was like just in the past week a controversial engagement bait post claiming to have news that oh, uh, yeah. the Transformers games uh, War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron and Devastation were going live on Xbox Live. Uh, that is not true yet. Yeah, uh, there's there are... like th those specific games probably not but like this well, vague this, rumors have well, been rumbling around for a while. Well the thing is you know Activision is owned by Microsoft now. Yeah. So that's that's a big part of it. Uh, and apparently, this is more confirmed, uh, the Steam CD keys for the games were updated recently, like in the past couple weeks. Uh, also, there have been some ratings with the Australian Game Rating Authority for two possible new games from Microsoft, mm. which rules out some of the other games that we know about. Yeah, like uh, the one that just came or is it still coming out? The Transformers Galactic Trials, which is the racing game, which is going to be on yeah. which I believe is not for PlayStation Microsoft. 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, Switch The fact that this is specifically from Microsoft does sound like it may be a re-release of yeah. 
uh, the Activision stuff. I will say I I uh, could not get a firm answer from anybody, so I did my own experimentation, and I got a copy of Transformers Devastation for Xbox One uh, transferred from a local GameStop to my GameStop. Uh, hmm. I picked that up today, and I can confirm that if you stick it in a Series X, because you love that physical media, uh, it does download a little backward compatibility update and says you're good to play. Yay. Uh, which is good, because I could not get a solid answer, including like from the resources that the GameStop employees usually use to look these things up, uh, about whether that backward compatibility is available. Uh, that doesn't necessarily prove anything, but it could, you know, that does mean that they've still got those updates sitting out there on the server. Uh, so that, you know, that uh, compatibility is available for the, the more current hardware. Yeah. Uh, so eh, keep keep watching, keep an eye out. Uh, one of my favorite booths at the flea market that just closed just opened up a brick and mortar store. And they had Fall of Cybertron and War for Cybertron for like Ooh. fifty and sixty five dollars respectively. Ooh, I mean, and their yeah. their prices are good too. So if they have it for that much, it's it probably actually goes like eighty or more on eBay. Yeah, yeah, their their prices tend to be very good. So well, it's uh, those are really fun. The single player was good, but man, the online of those games was really fun. So the, For someone uh, who hates on, a lot of online games, they were fun. <laughs> the collectible market for those games is uh, pretty robust. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Again, like I said, Activ Activision is owned by Microsoft. So if they're going to show up anywhere, it's going to be Xbox and or uh, something for PC like Steam. Yeah. Uh, so we can move on to the shipping report, uh, which actually doesn't have a whole lot to report. There's just lots of Transformers 1 stuff showing up. Yeah, things are just finally showing up. Well, a lot of Transformers 1 stuff, like you could get at least three different kinds of Optimus Prime. Yes. Um, well, there's there's the Studio Series. Yeah, there's the Studio Series, there's the Warrior, and there's whatever the, the other one. And there's the main line, there's, which I think is what most people are calling like it. A, bigger like a bigger for kids one yeah but not like it's one of the like sort of big chunky yeah yeah i, I mean i'm saying, sure like, there's like there's a third optimum five of those uh, so yeah nothing like i like i did say earlier you said you got uh thundertron and his crew yes from wall from actual walmart ship well uh, shipped from walmart so those are actually showing up in their distribution centers, at least, or at least their online retail distribution. So fingers crossed, those will actually show up soon. And fingers crossed, people will actually be able to get a hold of whoever they want to. But, you know, Filch, she's great. Yeah. Hopefully it'll uh, yeah. be fun to see her. I think most of the... I think we'll probably start to see more new toys pop up. Uh, as the holiday stock starts rolling in. And I think that's starting up. I know at my stores, they're moving stuff around and starting to get ready. Uh, as far as the, like, uh, remainder market, I'm going to say, because I'm a bookstore person, uh, a lot of Marvel Legends stuff has st suddenly started showing up at Ollie's. Mm. So there may be some Transformers stuff. I mean, basically, it sounds like Hasbro is starting to dump whatever old stock uh, into those uh, secondary channels. So you uh. may want to keep an ear to the ground for stuff showing up at Ollie's or Ross. There were the uh, the second wave, the later wave Beast Wars reissues uh, also oh. showing up at Ollie's. Uh, so your Wolf Fang, uh, Retrax, uh, some of the basic size ones. Uh, so if you missed out on those or you just didn't feel like 
paying $20 for what was originally a $5 toy, mm. uh, check out Ollie's because they are starting to get all that stuff in. Uh, so yeah, our main discussion for this week is movie stuff. Because the movie is coming out next week. It actually... It, 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 wait, next week? I thought it was the 20th? Wait. When... You know, so... I don't know what week this is. <laughs> <laughs> it is well, week after this next. episode comes out. But yes, so that is coming up soon and all the oh, merch the is starting to show okay, up. It's... Well, okay. So, so here's the thing. Mm. The original release date was the 20th. Oh, okay. And because that's a Friday, what that means effectively is that it starts on the Thursday. So that's the 19th, which is my birthday. And I was like, cool. It comes out on my birthday. Mm. Except now they're doing all these early showings. If you look around, I mean, even apart from all the fan showings yeah. that everyone we know on the internet has been going to uh there is a fan event showing yeah, on the f- which mostly seem to be in the uk yeah, there's a bunch in the u.s too but like mm. in actual oh, yeah. cities which, tickets are the 14th like, Damn it. like i don't miss living in an actual city enough uh but yeah there is also a fan event for the 14th but the 14th is not my birthday <laughs> mm. I'm not going to go see it on the 14th because that's not my birthday. I'm going to go see it on my birthday. (laughs) So, yes, if you were not aware, uh, look online. Uh, There is uh, it's pretty it's definitely more widespread. Uh, There were some that were an okay distance from me and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so it's definitely worth looking and seeing if it's within a, an acceptable drive. If you absolutely cannot wait until the actual release and you want to see it on the 14th, it sounds like some theater chains may have some special merch for that showing. Uh, I mean, I think they're like maybe handing out reprints of the uh, the reprints of the Marvel Transformers number one. Mm. Just like great, I have an original. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, that's that's worth looking into if you want to see it early, because everyone else seems to have already seen it early, even though it's not my birthday yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, there are early access and fan event showings. There are popcorn buckets showing up. Uh, oh, yeah. One of them has a lanyard. I don't know, like, oh, the bumblebee why head one? you're wearing the popcorn bucket around your neck like well, is see, it that much lose popcorn it. there's the one why does this one have popcorn coming out of Orion Pax's head I don't, oh. <laughs> the popcorn. I don't know I don't I don't get the pop I mean I do get the popcorn bucket thing because oh, I right, worked wasn't, we, there were like leaked images of like a giant Optimus, like, with a giant chubby torso, like he was Energon Prime. I don't think yes. I've seen that actually come out as a popcorn bucket. I mean, I realize what the point is, and the point is they want to drive, like, social media engagement. I worked at a Starbucks. I know what the point is of releasing products that only exist for people to take pictures of on Instagram, so... Yeah, but, like, you'd think they would have caught the wave of After Dune and Deadpool of, can you fuck the popcorn bucket? No, but that's not appropriate. I know. It's not appropriate in this context. I know it's not, but they they failed that marketing possibility. Tarn isn't even in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Starscream is? There's also, like, a fleece blanket. I guess that's true. Starscream is, isn't it? I guess the fleece blanket is for if the theater has their AC up too high, which is occasionally Ooh. a concern. I could use a fleece blanket. Uh, I got a fleece blanket for the first live-action Transformers movie. But, yeah, Cinemark has Having all of their merch movies. up. I'm sure at this point, AMC... Now I gotta look it up. AMC Theaters... Do, do, do check it out it's like hey you should go to this theater go to merchandise 
But anyway, yes, all of that wacky stuff is starting to show up. So check that out on the internet as I shoo cats away from my microphone cable. Uh, but yeah, there are, there's Lunchables, uh, that are branded. There's Halloween costumes. Uh, there is a Halloween costume matrix prop, which may or may not be a fire hazard. Uh, it sounds like some people who ordered them, uh, or pre-ordered them on Amazon had them, had the orders canceled and they got some message from like the Amazon safety email. So it oh, sounds like weird. there may have been a recall on some of them, but other people did get them. They're apparently very bright. Mm. Uh, but we will see if, you know, when those start showing up in stores in the next week or two, once uh, all the back to school stuff clears out of the seasonal area and the Halloween costumes take over. Uh, but yeah, lots of merch. Just uh, I'm I'm curious to see how the merch goes. I'm curious to see if we get like lounge fly bags and <laughs> all of that normal level of, of merch happenings. Uh, taking a look on AMC, but they've just got lots of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice stuff up right now. So it may be another mm. week or so before we see all their uh, merch stuff show up. For Transformers one, but I'm sure we'll we'll get more than just a bumblebee popcorn bucket that apparently doubles as a handbag. I would totally like carry my wallet and earbuds and stuff around and in a bumblebee head handbag. Uh, so yeah, I think that is about it for this time. Uh, by the next time we record, we will have seen Transformers 1. Yes. And since I, for one, picked up COVID seeing Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, hopefully I will not repeat that performance <laughs> with Transformers 1. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, like I said, if, if you are not place holding a specific special date for it, like I am, uh, look into those early screenings so you too can jump into the, the, your friend's spoiler chats, uh, where the friends who live in, like, New York and LA have been talking about it for a month now. Mm. Everybody seems to be really positive about it. I have resisted the urge to ask anyone we know who's already seen it if Bumblebee loses his voice. Uh. But I'm tempted. I'm tempted to just see if I can get that reassurance that that doesn't happen. I, well, maybe we, he might uh, like that? Like, I, there was another clip that came out of like <laughs> Elite One and Bumblebee talking, and it was mostly Bumblebee talking and explaining that his name is Badassatron, and he kept saying Badassatron over and over to the point where it's like, oh, is this is this foreshadowing that he's going to lose his voice at the end, and I might be happy about it? So you're sticking with the theory that they're making him really obnoxious, so you want him to lose his voice? <gasps> kind of. <laughs> Fair it's, enough. It's kind of Fair annoying. Enough. It's like, oh, wait, who, who the fuck was voicing him? I would, I would probably hate that. So, isn't it Keegan Michael Key? Yes. Uh, yes, Keegan Michael Key. I, my brain always mixes up which one's Key and Peel. Because I didn't watch enough of that <laughs> show. I saw a couple sketches. I forget who was who. One of them but, makes well, good horror movies, and the other one now voices Bumblebee. It's Bumblebee. <laughs> it's the, the good half and the, the dark half. <laughs> yes. Right, so that is it. I, I'm i looking forward to seeing the movie. I guess, depending on how the news goes next week, we might pop in for a quick episode before the movie happens, but we'll have to see how eh, probably the after. Unless there's the anything big and, and important desperately ill stray rescue kittens situation is going. Mm. Uh, speaking of, I have to go try to coerce a baby tuxi into actually eating some food for me. So, Aww. that is oh, it yeah, I have for to this go give, episode. Uh, 
medicine to a cat myself. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. Life is great. He's reasonably <laughs> good about great. it. Like cleaning cleaning his uh, injured foot is not fun though. Oh, that's no fun. All right. Well, until we next get around to recording, which should hopefully be in two weeks, uh, and not a month like this time. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, it has been. Yeah. Post con <laughs> stuff are just kind of so much stuff has caught up with us and sickness. Yeah. And kittens. Yeah. First COVID. First COVID. Uh, so I should mention that we have a Patreon set up uh, to help with ho- our hosting and other expenses at patreon.com slash Iacon Underground. Uh, for September, I am going to make everyone watch War Dawn because War Dawn is great. It's got the aerial bots. They're the best. <laughs> they are the best. And also there's some guy named like Pax something or other and I think there's some other characters that may be in in also this movie that we're gonna see Uh, we get to see Dion on the big screen yes oh man that would be hilarious or Dion oh it would be funny if he's like a high and die cameo that would be pretty great Uh, so yeah that is our Patreon Uh, We do special episodes every month. Uh, We also have our Stasis Pod podcast, which you're probably familiar with. We have started doing Cyberverse now. uh, So that is a great jumping on point if maybe you didn't know us before the last few months, but you also didn't want to jump in in the middle of season four of Rescue Bots, which (laughs) is understandable. You should definitely watch Rescue Bots, but I can maybe understand not jumping on in the middle there. Yeah, well, the the, the website has, like, convenient links to the beginning of various series we've gone through, so that, that helps. But, yes. Yeah, you can start now, although Cyberverse is a strange time to come into our lives. <laughs> it is a good, uh, it's a good jumping on point, though. Uh, and uh, we are... All over the social medias, I am Trickster with an X everywhere, T-R-I-X-T-E-R, uh, except I am not on the Twitter anymore. Oh. Uh, so I am on Blue Sky, and I run the Retro.Pizza Mastodon server. And I'm Strange, F-O-U-R, basically everywhere, too. I still use Twitter, kind of. I just bought Mostly just a- retweeting. I just bought a domain to point to my Neo City site. That is trickstersworkshop.net, mm. uh, where you can see my like EPUB of the Transformers Legends anthology and some extremely retro web design. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Uh, we'll wrap it up. I'm bad at wrapping things up. Uh, but until next time, this is Jen. And I'm David. 